Hi everybody, it's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com and we are in Los Angeles, California at the Society of Thoracic Surgeons Conference. I'm thrilled to be joined by Dr. Eric Roselli, who is the Chief of Adult Cardiac Surgery at the Cleveland Clinic in Cleveland, Ohio. We are here with Dr. Eric Roselli, who I'm gonna go ahead and call Eric. You must. Roselli, because Please. the two of us have known each other for over 30 years. We met all the way back at the University of Michigan. It's great to see you again, Good friend. Good to see you, bro. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. we're gonna to talk today about something you and I have been talking about for years and years, which is the Ross procedure complex operation. I've been thankful to have had one and gone on for nearly 20 years now with no reoperation. Awesome. But patients out there need to be mindful about whether or not this is the right procedure for them and they need to ask some very important questions. So we're going to talk about what are the four important questions patients should ask before a Ross procedure. And maybe we could start, Dr. Roselli, Eric, what would one of them be? Well, I, I think the important thing when we're thinking about valve choice, we're talking about young patients, okay? We're talking about valve choice. Um, you need to understand sort of um, in this shared decision-making process what your goals are. And so I think the first choice a patient should ask themselves is, is this question about do I go with a biologic choice or a mechanical valve? And both are really good. And that sort of, I think, guides the first sort of decision making. How do I feel about anticoagulation? And you can have that discussion with your surgeon about it. If they want to avoid anticoagulation, then that opens a discussion about these biologic choices, which is where the ROS fits. And so then another question would be, am I a good candidate for that? I know that there's a lot, of, a lot of centers are building their Ross programs. It's kind of awesome that we've seen a resurgence of it. Again, you're a living example of, you know, wonderful choice made. But I worry a little bit that there's maybe too much excitement about it. And the reason is you shouldn't feel like you're guaranteed that this living valve choice is absolutely going to last you a lifetime. That, that's concerning to me. In fact, that's concerning to me when someone chooses a mechanical valve because Sometimes you need an operation later on in life. And when you're a young patient, we're looking at decades of survival after your surgery. So the way I generally think about a Ross procedure is it is a great option in younger patients. And if you want to avoid anticoagulation, maybe it's a choice that will give you one less operation in your lifetime versus the other biologic choices. Lots of good, but you, you know the questions that we should ask. Why don't you tell the audience what you think well, those questions are? So thanks for flipping the script on me, yeah. Eric. I mean, I, for me, one of the questions I would think is if I'm at that point where I'm going down the pathway you describe and I'm meeting with a cardiac surgeon about the ROS, I might ask a question like, what are your outcomes with the patients that it's you've treated? Absolutely important. You know, at this meeting, and one of the meetings, it's a slide I use all the time when I'm speaking to surgeons. The patient is at the core of that decision-making process. But the things we take into account are the disease-specific factors. What are the issues with the valve, regurgitant, bicuspid, et cetera? What does the aorta look like? Other sort of important health considerations about that patient. Like, do you have other illnesses? What does your lifelong prognosis look like? And then we have to take into account the surgeon and the center's experience. What is their experience with providing these various options? So I'll tell a patient, hey, for you, all of the choices are on the table, but that's because we have a great experience and we know we can deliver that Ross option really well. Some surgeons maybe they aren't comfortable with the Ross and might not even be an option, but that's not because it's not an option for that patient. It's not, it may just not be an option for that patient with that surgical team. Got it, and so another question, if you're looking for that center that has the specialized ability to do the ROS, I might be concerned with something like complications. What is your history with complications for the ROS and how do you manage them? Is that something also that plays around in your algorithm? 100%. And if you know your surgical team isn't comfortable asking, answering those questions about how many they do, uh, what, what they expect the outcomes to be like, at, at least a ballpark figure of those things, um, and you're interested in it, then you might want to you know, ask them if there's someone else you should be talking to. Eric, this has been really different 
you and me coming together on brainstorming questions for patients. And I've had a lot of fun as always yeah. being your friend and also being your colleague here as we educate these patients about the Ross procedure. And on behalf of the patients, thanks to you and your team for everything that you are doing at the Cleveland Clinic. Thanks so much for being with me today. Yeah, thanks to you and your team for educating everybody. It's awesome. Thank you. Hi everybody, it's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen or click the blue button to visit heartvalvesurgery.com.